Green friends, and welcome to Now Hiring, our podcast about trends in staffing, recruiting, and talent. I'm Andy Weiss, CMO of Sepal, and I'm joined as always by Sepal's C- uh, founder and CEO, Samir Penakalapati. And in, in this episode, you know, we're recording it at, as, as we sit awaiting maybe an interest rate cut. We've got a, a pending election in the U.S. We had a, a recent jobs report that had better than expected or improvement of uh, new jobs in August over July. So interest rates and, and unemployment and all these things kind of Samir on people's minds and, and an election coming up. You know, as you look at, at the state of staffing and recruiting, particularly in IT and, and general staffing, kind of where's your head at? What are you seeing? What are you feeling? What what do you feel like the pulse is of the market today? Yeah. I hear a lot and I, you know, we, we get to know people talk about it, like when this gets better or when this gets turned around to be a better, but I think I always talk about it, hear about it saying we're in a perfect storm right now. Right. One, obviously the biggest of all is the high interest rates environment, uh, which obviously generally, you know, the uh, spend on it projects or IT enhancements kind of uh, slow down. That's a one, right? That's a mm-hmm. big one. And the yeah. second, the impact of AI on existing systems and processes. So I'm talking about every market industry or the companies looking into, hey, what is the AI impact on my business and on to my, to our, in my industry, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. Yeah. Because we're we're seeing like with some of the layoffs that were announced in August, we're seeing AI kind of replacing financial performance as the reason for these layoffs. Whether that's you know the reality or not, it's it's definitely on you know leadership's mind and on on you know the the minds of the rank and file kind of employees. Like, what do I do and stuff? So yeah, it's definitely a hot topic. Yeah, like boards are coming and asking their CIOs, CTOs, and their the CEOs saying. We hear a lot about the AI and the disruption. How is that impacting our industry? How is that going to impact our business? And is there anything that we can lever the, these AI advancements so that we mm-hmm. can be more uh, efficient running our business? You know, it's everybody's just talking about. So the, and then, and the CI was in CT was in their budgets or our, you know, you know, portion of that is going really towards about exploring AI. And the use cases of AI, there's a lot more happening around, okay, you know what, let's just uh, hold what we are and let's just look into what AI can do it. And, and maybe there is a, there are a, a few new systems or different uh, platforms, maybe platforms to upgrade that we can take advantage. So everybody's into that, yeah. you know, thought of actually, you know, just exploring the AI. So that is also kind of a slows down the IT spend a little bit. So it's like high interest rates the impact of AI and then obviously, you know, every, every time you go through, especially the United States, you go through election year, the second half of the election, the, the election year, it, it's intense. It's a distraction. People talk about different things and, you know, so that's all three is a, is a perfect combination. It's like, I call it yeah. it's a storm, that perfect storm. We're all here. That's what we're going to throw it. I think once we get into 2025, the elections over, the, you know, I think the, the people are learning a lot about the AI impact into their industry, how they can lever the AI and what their boundaries of the applying AI at this point in time. And also on top of that, you know, a lot of regulations coming around AI. So they'll also be mindful of that. So all yeah. of that, I think, gets some clarity by mid next year. Okay. So I want to kind of go, I'm going to Two things. One, what, I've got a question for you about kind of the interest rates, and I want to come back to some of the, the regulatory components as, as well. So on the interest rates, so the expectation is, hey, the, the in the U.S., the Fed is probably going to lower interest rates in their September meeting. That's the expectation. So, But from a reality standpoint, like as a, as a, as a business operator, how quick, like how quickly if, if, if the interest rates are lowered, how quickly are, are things going to change? Or is this just, you know, back to your perfect storm, is this just one of the things that needs to change to start kind of getting people feeling more positively about hiring and, and growth? Yeah. 
Look, everybody wants to see, including myself, the flip over the switch and start doing a great economy starting in October. That's not happening, yeah. right? That's the reality. Yeah. So the reality, <laughs> the reality is, you know, they, it's it, the interest rates reduction. I think the most likely expected, it, I think it's September 17th at meeting and they're expecting, widely expected is 25 basis points, which is a quarter percentage of the interest rate mm-hmm. reduction. But if some miracle happens, it's maybe go to 50 basis points, a half percent reduction, which is nobody knows about it. So whatever the situation, right, it's a really a small dent. That's it. It's yeah. not going to make a big dent, right? It's not, it's not the, it's not the, it's not the magic wand or no, anything like, it's no, not. it's okay. So, so, so given Let that. say another one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's just, just a little bit, 25 to 50 basis points. Uh, it happens, but I think the mood that, that, okay, now we are here where we're seeing the downward trend on interest rates. I think the sentiment of that might be also very helpful. We have been seeing last three years, this only the interest is going up. Now we're mm-hmm. seeing the downtrend. I think that would have a positive and, and maybe a favorable you know, attention of the markets. But again, yeah. in, a, in a large scheme of things, it is not going to make a big dent for either 25 basis points or 50 basis points of interest rate reduction. It's, it's not a quick fix yeah. thing. So, so given that it's not a quick fix, while we, while we think it may happen, it's not a quick fix. Operational efficiency is kind of always important, but particularly during kind of this perfect storm, as you describe it, it's like probably becomes even more important. So what should or what can IT staffing firms do to strike this balance between kind of being financially responsible or cost cutting and also kind of planning for, for growth and, and you know, strategic investments, maybe AI or some other technologies or other, other things that they're, they're, they're thinking about and may have put off. How yep. do they balance that? Um, the staffing firms, obviously, we are seeing a tremendous amount of margin pressure on, on, on any type of staffing sector, be it IT, engineering, healthcare, light industrial all of those runs on, you know, really tight squeezed margins, you know, on top of that, the cost also tremendously went up because of these regulations. Like, you know, this is an enormous amount of regulations is federal and state level and county level is just, you know, and, and that's just not going to stop, right? It's just only going to go get worse. So the, the cost of managing the compliance is an expensive too, on top of everything that's happening. So the so how do we address this, right? Like it's, yeah. uh, it's just in one form problem. It's everybody's problem. So definitely the way to do is, you know, re- how do you reduce your costs? How can you get more with less, right? Mm-hmm. Automation is your probably the best, brightest spot at this point in time for staffing industry, right? Is your recruitment operations are automated or at least, you know, a majority of those are automated by, you know, enhancing your existing ATS workforce platforms. And then you're also automating a lot of your back office operations through your workforce platforms, through your integrated systems and and your suppliers management through your integrated VMS platforms. All of that really, you know, you have to have an absolute, uh, you know, deployment of great systems that automates your front office, back mm-hmm. office of hiring people, right? For so, it, so, so it sounds like, you know, you may be experiencing like a little bit of a, maybe a, a little bit of a slowdown. And so instead, use this time kind of as an opportunity yeah. to take a look at your processes, your systems, your technology yeah. and investments and look at kind of creating some, are there ways that you can automate stuff so that, you know, that basically doing the things that you don't, you may not have the time to, to tackle Correct. when you're ultra busy and wish you had this stuff in place. Like now's the, t- now's the time to kind of maybe do some of that spring cleaning, if you will. Yeah. You know, actually the, the tech enhancements and, and the tech adoption not only help you to reduce your, you know, overall costs in the business, but also puts you ahead of your competition in terms of winning more business, right? Mm-hmm. It's a double-edged sword actually doing it. And if there's any time, this is the time for staffing firms to really upgrade their tech and enhance and, and, and utilize the AI capabilities that brings these tech platforms 
I'm just really looking to the holistically their front office and back office. And because that's, yeah. the, that's where the most cost for staffing firms, you know, apart from the payroll and other things. So I would say like, you know, automation, tech adoption, tech consolidation, some of those biggest things that staffing firms actually can take advantage and then still be profitable and still be competitive compared to your competitors. Because if they don't, yeah. if you don't adapt and somebody else will adapt and they can able to produce better bill rates than you, then you would lose the business to your competitors. So I think tech plays probably more significant role today than ever in the past. For, uh, for so I think Samir, I think Samir, you just teed up our, maybe our next episode. Yeah. So for all of the, the listeners, please be sure to check out our, our other episodes uh, for now hiring both on Spotify and on YouTube. We also have a newsletter and I'd like to invite you to join or extend the conversation on our new Slack channel for now hiring. So coming up, we've got a, a, another episode on AI and technology. And in the meantime, uh, we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.